It has been two years, almost to the date, since NVIDIA launched their RTX 20 series graphics cards. September 20th, 2018 saw the launch of the RTX 2080, followed closely by the RTX 2080 Ti, and reviews were mixed. Most recognized the increased performance of the new GPUs, particularly with the beastly 2080 Ti, but there were plenty of grumbles about the pricing and how NVIDIA stacked the new at the time GPU prices on top of their former 10 series that it was replacing, like the venerable GT GTX 1080 Ti, which was a $700 card that was replaced at the $700 price point by the RTX 2080, which had similar performance. Now NVIDIA is launching the 30 series with the RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090, and today kicks things off with the RTX 3080 reviews. They are available for sale tomorrow on the 17th. So has NVIDIA reset the GPU landscape with this $700 offering, which supposedly outperforms the $1,200 plus 2080 Ti? Here's my assessment. Excellent! The Mod Mic series by Antlion features three broadcast quality mics, which can be attached to headphones or a VR visor to create the ultimate headset. The Mod Mic Uni's analog 3.5mm connection works with nearly any device, including Xbox and PlayStation controllers. The Mod Mic USB is USB powered with superior sound quality in both omni and unidirectional settings, and the flagship Mod Mic Wireless features noise cancelling and high quality recording modes, and is the only mic in the world that delivers a full 16 bit 48kHz audio signal via aptX low latency encoding. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So guys, feel free to jump ahead in the video for the benchmark numbers. I just want to quickly talk about the contributing factors for this launch and my testing setup. Unfortunately, on the competition side, AMD still has no answer for NVIDIA's GPU offerings at the high end. Once you get above the $500 price point, since the top card they have right now that's widely available is the RX 5700 XT. Because of that lack of competition, many thought that when NVIDIA finally launched the RTX 30 series, that they would again increase prices. But the RTX 3080 is still starting at $700, the same price as the original RTX 2080 at launch. The RTX 3070 will also stay at $500, but the RTX 3090 will now be $1,500. So for the high-end but still somewhat obtainable cards in the $500 to $700 range, Nvidia is sticking with the same prices from a couple years ago, and that's okay with me. We will discuss whether or not the 3090 is worth $1,500 at a later time. For now, we're going to focus on the 20. 3080. But then of course there is the RTX discussion, and here we're actually in a better situation than two years ago. You may or may not have interest in ray tracing, but DLSS is undeniably a great boost in performance at high resolutions, and ray tracing support is gaining wider adoption across a range of titles. So we can actually test it at launch this time. Hooray! I do have some ray tracing and DLSS test numbers to share with you guys, but for now I will be focusing on raster and shading performance. Here are the cards that I will be testing in today's video. First, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, of course, which is an all-new custom-designed card straight from NVIDIA. It has a relatively short PCB with a V-shaped cutout that allows for air to pass straight through the finned section at the end of the card, and it is cooled by two axial fans and an array of heat pipes and heat fins. The GPU itself is built with Samsung's 8 nanometer lithography and has 8,704 CUDA cores, 68 SM units, and ships with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM with a data rate of 19 gigabits per second. The RTX 2080 Ti is now the former flagship from the RTX line, which sold for maybe $1,100 and up if you got lucky, but most cards like this Asus ROG Strix OC model were upwards of $1,200 each. The GPU is built on 12 nanometer lithography, it has 4,352 CUDA cores, and 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 to round out the specs. Next we have the RTX 2080, which has been supplanted by the RTX 2080 Super, which I'm conveniently ignoring for this review so we can see the performance change specifically from two years ago to now. This is the Founders Edition, it's running at stock, so I find it to be a good point of comparison for the 3080. It has 2,944 CUDA cores and 8 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. Here's the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, again represented by an AIB model, the ASUS ROG Strix OC version. The 1080 Ti remained popular after the 20 series launch due to its competitive performance and 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. And since I wanted to compare the 10 series, I figured the flagship model from that line was a good bet. Also from the GTX 10 series is the GTX 1070, represented here by the Galax EX OC Sniper model. I think the 1070 is a very popular GPU that a lot of people are still using, so you'll be able to see just how far behind the 3080 is leaving you with those numbers. Finally, I had a late edition, the AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT, because that is the competition, or at least the best Radeon can currently offer, that you can actually buy. The Radeon, Radeon 7 doesn't count, in my opinion. I use the reference card because it's faster than the ASUS RX 5700 XT that I also have, and it will show how much ground AMD needs to make up 
next month with the announcement and or launch of their big Navi RDNA 2 based cards that they have been conveniently teasing to draw attention from Nvidia's recent announcements and launches. Those are the GPUs I'm using though, and here is a look at the raw stats for all of the cards. These are the reference numbers for each GPU, by the way, to compare if you so desire. Feel free to pause right now if you want to take a closer look at this chart. I'm going to move on to my test setup right here. All tests were run on this test system, and yes, it's an AMD test bed. I switched to the 3950X based on popular demand after I tweeted asking you guys for feedback, and also this allows us to use the full PCI Express 4.0 bandwidth for the 3080 where it applies, and also for the RX 57. 700 XT that also supports it. The CPU is running at 4.4 to 4.7 gigahertz with auto OC and PBO enabled and cooled by an NZXT Kraken X62 280 millimeter all in one liquid cooler. Again, here you have the stats for the rest of the system if you want to take a closer look. Let's move into the benchmarks. And here are the actual clock speeds I was seeing out of the cards while in use. Note that my AIB cards like the GTX 1070 and the RTX 2080 Ti are running with their out of the box manufacturer overclocks. So the base and boost values are higher than in the spec sheet for those cards. Now it's time to see if the RTX 3080 can live up to those claims that Jensen made about it being up to two times as fast as the RTX 2080. We're starting with 3 Mark Time Spy Extreme, which is a synthetic benchmark from 3 Mark. It's a DirectX 12 test, and here the 3080's graphics score was about 29% faster than the 2080 Ti. Meanwhile, the RTX 2080 was about 41% slower than the 3080, so not quite a doubling of performance here. But the GTX 1080 Ti score of 4450 did get doubled, up to 8900 for the 3080. Impressive, but let's move into some actual games instead of synthetics. Here is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, which is a new addition to my benchmark suite and it's a beautiful game that lets you fly anywhere in the world, although it is still a DirectX 11 title. At 1080, we're seeing results that are CPU limited, and this applies in some of the other tests too in my suite here, so keep it in mind. The 3080 sees just an 8% improvement over the 2080 Ti here, and the 2080 is just about 8% behind versus the 3080. At 4K, the CPU limitation isn't a factor, so the relative performance becomes much more apparent. The 3080 is 18.5% faster here than the 2080 Ti, and the 2080 is slower than the 3080 by 30 38%. Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding is another new title I've added to the mix using DirectX 12 and running at the very high preset. We're seeing good frame rates at 1080, upwards of 150 FPS on average from the 3080, which is good for 144 Hz monitor users in particular. It's about 7% faster than the 2080 Ti here, and the 2080 is lagging behind by about 25%. Moving to 4K, again, we're gonna see those CPU limitations fade and the 3080 is up again on the 2080 Ti by 25%. And yet again, a healthy lead over the RTX 2080, which is 40% slower. I can't help but feel like I'd be more impressed with the gen over gen uplift from the 2080 to the 3080 if I wasn't constantly looking for that up to two times as fast performance that Jensen talked about. 65% faster here is still quite good though. Here's Shadow of the Tomb Raider running in DirectX 12 mode and at 1080 the RTX 3080 is slower than almost everything except the GTX 1070. Uh, okay, absolutely we are hitting the CPU barrier here and all the GPUs in the middle here are within a frame or so of each other. The RX 5700 XT does get to shine for a brief moment in my testing as it does have excellent DirectX 12 performance and go figure, it's playing really nicely with the 3950X CPU, which gives it the edge. But again, we are CPU limited. At 4K, we can see the GPU's performance instead of the CPU. So the 3080 is about 23% faster here than the 2080 Ti, and the 2080 is once again lagging behind by about 36%. GTA 5 is our final DirectX 11 title. This is an exciting upcoming game for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. LOL. Uh, we can't seem to quit GTA 5, but it is very consistent for DirectX 11 testing and it is still a popular game. But at 1080, we are CPU capped yet again, although the RTX 3080 does win the 1% low competition here with 103.9 FPS. At 4K, things break apart a little bit and the 3080 is 18% faster than the 2080 Ti, while the 2080 is about 37% slower than the 3080. Here is some Doom Eternal. This is our sole Vulcan title from our suite, and it's also a very fun game if you like cutting demons in half with chainsaws. It also showed excellent scaling even at 1080p, allowing the RTX 3080 a 20% bump over the 2080 Ti. It's a great contender for super high refresh rate gameplay on those fancy new 360 hertz monitors that they're trying to sell you now with that 330 frames per second average. The RTX 2080 was 32% slower here. At 4K, there was even more of a gap. At 165 FPS average, the 3080 was 38% faster than the 2080 Ti, while also comfortably leading the RTX 2080 by, oh, look at that. 
more than 50%, 54% actually, meaning that the 3080 was 2.17 times as fast. So I guess Nvidia wasn't lying after all. They just said up to, which means not all the time. Here's Battlefield 5 running in DirectX 12 mode. So that means I can also turn on some RTX features for further comparison in just a few minutes. But looking at raw performance for now at 1080, the RTX 3080 is just 5.5% faster than the 2080 Ti, again, indicating some CPU limitations. But at 4K, the field opens up a bit more. The 3080 beats the 2080 Ti by 26%, while also remaining about 41% faster than the RTX 2080. And if I hadn't mentioned before, uh, RIP GTX 1070 owners, I'm so terribly sorry for your losses today. Rounding things out with Metro Exodus at 1080, we're about 7% faster than the 2080 Ti, again, indicating some CPU limitation, but also definitely the best performance I've seen out of a single GPU in this test. At 4K, we have more variants yet again, and the RTX 3080 leads the 2080 Ti by 20%, while the RTX 2080 is about 35% slower. So there you go, guys, gaming comparisons, but we are not done yet. Nvidia would like to point out that the shading and rasterization work that the CUDA cores at all in their GPUs do is also supplemented by RT cores that handle ray tracing and tensor cores that handle AI, which for gamers is what accelerates DLSS, deep learning super sampling, which effectively allows you to play a game at a high resolution like 4K without the typical frame rate performance hit. Now, ray tracing is something that can be implemented in a lot of different ways from game to game, so this shouldn't be taken as a complete assessment of ray tracing or DLSS performance, but I wanted to provide a few sample tests for you guys for comparison. We're starting off with three 3D Mark Port Royal, which is a synthetic test from 3D Mark, and this is just for some raw numbers. Nvidia says that the second gen RT cores in these Ampere GPUs are 1.7 times as fast compared to the first gen ones in the 20 series, and that does seem to be validated here, at least if you're comparing the RTX 3080 directly to the 2080, it clocked in a 1.69 times higher score. Compared to the 2080 Ti, it is 1.25 times as fast though. Enabling the ray tracing ultra setting in Battlefield 5 looks very pretty, and it doesn't kneecap performance as much as it used to back when it first launched, but it still shows about one third fewer frames, bringing the 3080 down to about 108 frames per second at 1080p. 1080 Ti users might note here that those RT cores actually do do stuff when ray tracing is enabled, so if you want the ray tracing, you're probably gonna need to upgrade. But there are different ways to look at these numbers. Uh, and I wanted to point out that the RTX 2080's frame rate dropped about 40% with ray tracing turned on, whereas the RTX 3080's dropped about 30%, so it took less of a hit. In terms of overall performance with ray tracing on, the 3080 was 50% faster, or about 1.5 times the performance of the 2080 here. Meanwhile, at 4K, the RTX 2080's frame rate dropped about 50% with ray tracing turned on, RTX 3080's dropped 46%, so it was a bit closer than at 1080p. Again here, the overall performance with ray tracing on was that the 3080 was 83% faster, or about 1.8 times as fast as the 2080. So again, this would back up Nvidia's claims. Let's check out Metro Exodus though, which uses ray tracing for global illumination, which doesn't result in as much of a frame rate drop when enabled versus Battlefield 5's implementation. With ray tracing on at 1080, the RTX 2080's frame rate dropped about 27%, and the RTX 3080's FPS dropped 21%. That resulted in a frame rate of 86.4 for the 3080, about 42% faster versus the 2080. With ray tracing on at 4K, the RTX 2080's frame rate dropped about 47%, and the 3080's FPS dropped 39%. That resulted in a frame rate of 39.2 for the 3080, about 76% faster than the 2080. And again, looking pretty close to that 1.7X claim for the second gen RT cores. Finally, here's a look at the DLSS performance at 4K for Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus. DLSS gives you more frames by rendering the game at a lower resolution and then upscaling with AI inferencing to improve the detail. Nvidia says that using this can even look better than native 4K rendering, but we'll have to validate that claim at a later time. It can be enabled without ray tracing, but for this test, I wanted to see how many frames could be clawed back with the LSS turned on. For Battlefield 5, the 3080 was able to go from 51.9 FPS with pure ray tracing to 67.3 FPS with DLSS added. That's about a 30% bump, and anecdotally, I did not notice much of a shift in the image quality. The RTX 2080 saw a frame rate bump of 50% with RTSS though, which indicated to me that I should leave this as a quick sample test rather than drawing too many conclusions from it, because more DLSS specific testing with the ray tracing variables removed would probably be a better call in this case if you were doing a more direct comparison of last gen to this gen. 
Here are the Metro Exodus ray tracing and DLSS results as well though, where the RTX 3080 had 47% more frames with DLSS turned on versus just ray tracing, while the RTX 2080 jumped up 61% to hit a barely playable 35.9 FPS. Now there's a lot to digest here with these numbers, so let's see if I can sum things up fairly quickly. And oh my gosh, we haven't even looked at temperatures or power draw. Here are the peak temperatures recorded for each card across all of my tests. The 3080 hit 80 degrees Celsius, which is pretty normal for me with NVIDIA designed cards, but when I cover third party models, I will take a closer look at temperatures and noise generated. For what it's worth, the entire housing of the RTX 3080 does seem to act like a heat sink since it's metal, and it does get pretty toasty to the touch, but noise levels were never too loud or noticeable. Here are my power draw numbers as well, and this is where there's absolutely a valid critique of this card. It is more power hungry than past models, sucking up 50 to 60 watts more than the 2080 Ti on average, which is why there is a 750 watt power supply recommendation for it, and most of the designs that we've seen from third parties are quite big with triple fans and triple slot designs. Small form factor builders beware. You will want a case with good airflow and a solid power supply to keep this card happy. And here are my overall numbers, evenly weighted by game using the RTX 2080 Ti as the 100% baseline, showing relative performance from there. I separated the 1080p and 4K numbers because the 1080 situation here with the 3950X was often CPU limited. There's probably something to be said for testing these cards with a 10900K at lower resolutions, but then you would lose the PCI Express 4.0 bandwidth. Probably there will be more testing in a month or three with Ryzen 4000 series CPUs when they launch and or Intel Rocket Lake CPUs which are expected to support PCI Express 4.0. For now, focus on those 4K numbers for direct GPU performance comparison, and here you can also see the pricing of each GPU relative to the weighted performance numbers, which really shows, I guess, my short version of the review for this card. 25% more performance than the RTX 2080 Ti for 700 bucks instead of $1,200 plus. Not too bad in my opinion. So there you have it guys, that is my launch review of the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Founders Edition. It is a beautifully designed card, I think, just talking aesthetically, but there are third-party add-in board vendors waiting in the wings with their cards too, which I think we should be able to take a look at in the next day or two, so stay tuned for that. There will be more benchmarks. I will post links to the video cards that I've tested and hopefully links to this if it's available uh, down in the video's description, so let me know in the comments while you're down there if you're impressed with the RTX 3080, or maybe you're waiting for the RTX 3070 that's gonna be 200 bucks cheaper, or the 3090 if you've got money falling out of your butt, as I like to say, or of course those big Navi announcements which we're expected to hear about at the end of October if you're a little bit more patient. We'll have to keep an eye out on the actual pricing and availability of these RTX 3080s as well, but AIB card reviews should start to go up tomorrow, so you won't just be limited to the Founders Edition if they do sell out. That's all for this video, guys. A closing reminder to check out my store at Paul's Hardware net for merchandise, shirts, pint glasses, other excellent paraphernalia. And of course, hit that like button. If you enjoyed this video, uh, review videos like this take an insane amount of work, so I really appreciate that. And if you really, really enjoyed it, then uh, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next video.